everybody, Dr. Oliver here, backintelligence.com. And today we're gonna to talk about spinal surgeries and are they really necessary? Who potentially needs them and do people really benefit from them? So if you haven't done so yet, click the link below, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get more informational videos from us. So spinal surgeries are done very frequently in our country. They've actually increased year over year after, over the past 20 years. In, in America, we tend to see over a million spinal procedures done a year. So some sort of invasive procedure done up upon the spine. That's a huge number. Out of those, 350,000 are fusion surgeries, where they're taking two vertebrae and fusing them together because of some sort of problem, probably with the disc or the joints. These surgeries are often unnecessary. The studies show the outcomes for someone that has spinal surgery versus someone under conservative care tends to be the same, if not better, in the conservative care group because you're not invasively cutting and you're not changing the biomechanics of your spine. So besides spinal fusions, we tend to see other things. We tend to see laminectomies where they're shaving portions of the bone out to allow more room. We see microdiscectomies where they're taking portions of a disc out. Some, they have disc replacements now. They have all sorts of things that they can do to the spine invasively. And some of them are more serious than others, but all of them involve cutting and going inside and changing something structurally. So the question becomes, is that really necessary or is it prudent? It really depends on the situation. Some people definitely need spinal surgery. We're gonna say that right off the bat. If you have any significant symptoms, if you have a tumor, if you have a progressive loss of strength, or if you have any abnormal serious symptoms, such as incontinence, inability to control urination, significant muscle wasting or weakness that occurs suddenly, surgery may be a valid option for you because there's no other option. You have to deal with that then, or you risk the loss of neurological control of certain muscles or your bladder or other things. So there are cases where no doubt surgery is necessary. The good news is these symptoms and conditions are extremely rare and they definitely don't warrant the over 1 million procedures that are done upon the spine each year. So besides these really rare conditions, there's a variety of other conditions that people get surgery for. People get surgery all the time for herniated discs, bulging discs, uh, stenosis, there's all sorts of conditions that people will go in and get surgery for. At any given time in this world, studies show there's 1 billion people with some sort of back pain. 80% of Americans are gonna have back pain in their life. So we know that it's prevalent, but is it really the right thing to do to go ahead and have surgery? The real option in the studies are showing that doing conservative care is the best thing to do first. So whether you try some self-care, you could try some self myofascial release, some exercises that you've find on different sites and different locations, or you're gonna seek the help of a professional that can help rehabilitate you. A chiropractor like myself, a good physical therapist, someone that can take you through the process and help you fix the issue. Because the issue is not your spine is broken. The issue is you caused something, or you did something to stress your spine. So why don't we try to fix that? That's why the studies show people go and have surgery, they are bound to have some sort of repeat surgery later on. Why? Because they didn't change their habits. They didn't change the things that actually caused the issue. So rehabilitation, exercise, core strengthening, avoiding postures and habits that stress your spine, that's the number one thing someone can do. If those don't work and you've exhausted all possibilities, then perhaps you're going to think about surgery. But it should be the last thing at the end of the line that you think about. And if you're thinking about surgery and you have a, an orthopedic or a neurosurgeon or someone who has recommended surgery to you, it's always best to get at least one more opinion. In my opinion, you get two more opinions at least. Studies show out of the people that get a second opinion, 30% of them, the, the second doctor doesn't agree with the first doctor. What does that tell you? So if there's no specific agreement here, we really need to look at the situation. Having surgery should be a last option. We should try conservative things first. So exercise, hands-on therapy, whether it's muscle therapy from a chiropractor, physical therapist, massage therapist, someone that's really good at what they do, then we venture down the road if, if we don't get better. But ideally, most people are gonna get better. And again, studies show six months, a year, two years out from surgery versus non-surgery, people are better off doing exercise and not going under the knife. Many times, People see an orthopedic, they see a neurosurgeon, they're gonna see a doctor that looks at an image, looks at an MRI and sees a bulging or herniated disc, and they point to that 
and they say, that's your problem, let's fix that right there. Again, studies show just because we see something on MRI doesn't mean that's the problem. Statistically, the majority of people, whether it's pain-free, you took an MRI of their back, would have some sort of abnormality, bulges and herniations. So we know they're very commonplace. They don't require surgery unless there's significant complications or significant symptoms associated with it that are progressive and cannot be dealt with any other way. It's always best to try these things conservatively. Most people will get better over time with conservative care. So for the common conditions we're talking about, though they're very painful and can be very debilitating to people, the first option should not be surgery. The first option be, should be conservative care. Generally getting an evaluation, a good diagnosis is really important. So seeing a professional like myself and then either managing it with that professional or trying to manage it on your own. Most people will get better doing this. Then getting an evaluation by an orthopedic or a neurosurgeon would be a recommendation. But again, this is highly unlikely and rarely ever necessary for people. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you like it as well as subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos just like this. Also, research shows that uh, you need to strengthen your core if you want to alleviate some of that low back pain. Uh, and not only that, but you need to make sure that the exercises that you perform really target those deep core muscles, and you need to make sure those exercises are safe for your spine. Now we have a free PDF that we'd love to send you with uh, some of the most effective and safest core exercises that you can do from your home. So if you'd like to get that PDF, there's going to be a link to it somewhere here on the video or down below in the description. Just go to that page, enter your email, and we'll send you that free PDF right away.